Okay, so after that pain in the ass that was that top bracket, now we're gonna get these airbags ready. We're gonna do both of them now and just leave the one to the side until later. So, you take a half inch bolt, you take a washer, it goes through the bottom of this, like so. Open up, hopefully I'm in the frame. Then it attaches to yep, this end of the airbag. So now we'll just hand thread it. Maybe. Okay. Maybe not. Maybe not. Turn the bag and hold the bolt or something. Technical difficulties. There we go. <laughs> and yeah, just hand thread it like so. Is there a torque for this? Mm, no. Loose. I right, leave it loose at this time. There you go. That's what we were missing. So make sure that it'll still. Oof. Make sure that it'll still move in the slot. And we'll do it on this one too. Yep. So those, I think. Stop the swivel air fitting. On the there, sleeve so finger tight plus one and a half turns. So yeah, I guess we can do that here as well. What size are those things? Probably half. There's a half inch wrench there. So these, they already have the Kevlar on them. Or whatever equivalent. The Teflon? Teflon. Teflon tape or pipe sealant. Now so we just. Gonna so the goal is to, what the heck? What's, what? It's a swivel. So you gotta use this. What does it say? Finger tight plus one and a half. Yeah. So I would tighten the, did you tighten the hex by hand first? Yeah, until it wouldn't move. And then, of course now it's loose. So I gotta re-hand tighten it. One and a half, so. One. That's not a half. It's been stretched. And a half. So with pipe fittings, uh, generally speaking, there's no such thing as... Oh my god. You don't have to tighten the crap out of them. If you go too tight, you split it. Yeah. I'm gonna go one and a quarter, my god. Oh. Uh, his one and a quarter is probably my one and a half. <laughs> Just difference in finger strength. And those plastic nuts hold the top of the bag in place, but you can't put them on yet because it's got to go through the hole first. All right, so we're back down here at the back corner of the truck, and uh, we're now going to install this. We're going to clean it a little bit first. So we're going to clean the leaf spring off a little bit. It's not, it's not too bad. You just don't want to have any loose sand or rust or anything between the. Good if we had some light too, that would be good if the camera could see it. Handy. All right, now the real fun. How does that length fit into there? Well, you gotta <coughs> squeeze the airbag. You gotta squeeze the literal crap out of it to be able to get it to go in here. Oh my god. You gotta rotate that to fit it through, I think. Oh. Oh You're probably no, supposed to put it in first. Like put the top in first. Probably. I, mean. I don't know how you get that. Like this. There. Ta da. This is supposed these, to be a somewhat sterile. Of course, these modern fender liners, are, they're like, they're kind of like hairy. So they just collect dirt. Yeah, what is with it being like fibrous? instead it's, of a, It's all the modern ones. Instead of a smooth plastic. That's a lot of, yeah. That's, that's, gonna, be, that's gonna be fun. And then we have a U-bolt. A singular U-bolt. A single U-bolt. There should probably be two, personally. But. Uh, and there's supposed to be washers underneath 
these. Okay. So you bolt slides into the, the. Yeah, I think. That's not even gonna. That's not even gonna clear. Barrels of fun. You sure that's how that's supposed to go? Because that doesn't even line up straight. But anyway, it's fine. The tip of the lower bracket goes over the back leaf spring U bolt. Yeah, that's how we got it. And it's got to be as far back as it'll go. And the U, the U bolt we're putting on is still on an angle, but whatever. Washers. Let's do one at a time first. Get them started and then. That EBS lining up. Having the breeze. Having the breeze. Yeah. Uh, that ain't gonna work for you guys. So this is where I would say if we had, a, we could use the impact gunner if we had an air, an air ratchet or something. So we're going to use an impact wrench to speed speed us on our way. It doesn't way. have to be impact. It could be a drill, but just for... And unfortunately, that's all you get because it runs out of socket depth. We need an extra deep socket. Which doesn't exist. Where's my ratchet wrench? From down there, where did it go? I got it. This is gonna be... I'm gonna say what we're supposed to torque this to. To uh, 16 foot pounds. Yeah, now we're gonna do that with the socket on the Yeah, true. There wasn't anything else we were supposed to put on here that's making it too short, right? Or too long? No, it's everything. I'm confused. And the goal with this would be to try and bring both nuts up evenly. So, so that it's relatively straight. I'm just gonna have to guess what 16 is, since we have no way of putting a torch in front of it. So, considering once again the instructions have let us down, we're going to give you a little bit of intuition here as to how you're supposed to torque this when you can't put a socket on it. Yeah, we don't need that anymore because we don't have a torque wrench that'll work out here or in here, so it's okay. Sixteen is not very much, so that should be more than enough. All right. So all I did was try and center the black bracket on the spring because it's way bigger than it needs to be. And yeah, I think, I don't know how much I like that having force against the fitting. It might just snap it off if it vibrates too much, but you can do something with that come nicer weather if you're still worried about it. As I move the camera. Excuse us. Okay. So 
now we're going to go to the other side and set up a time lapse and install it well, over there. Well, not just yet. Do you mean not just yet? Not just oh. yet. Not just yet. Oh, we can't even get that on. Ah, good. So much good. <coughs> we cannot even get the nut on. That is awesome. Okay, so it goes that way. Okay. I'm gonna try and push this down. Oh, never mind. <laughs> that was easy. Okay, there you go. There. And start it. Just be careful it's not cross threaded. Oh, that's definitely cross threaded. Okay. Nope. Fucking for fuck's sake. <laughs> My god. Any such thing is not fucking dirty. The car never goes out in anything but sunny weather in the summer. Never sees a gravel road, never sees rain. I never mean, sees turn chip either. I think that's still cross threaded, but. Only, you know, only on by fingers. asphalt or concrete after it's been swept in the springs. <laughs> okay, so that's on there, still loose. We just have to remember to snug it up after the bag's tight. But we gotta put air in it before we can do that. So this side should be done now, I think. That's all tightened. That's tightened. That doesn't have anything to tighten. We have to figure out how to tighten that bolt on the bottom afterwards. That's gonna be fun. Um, That's gonna have to have uh, air put in it to make it not do that. And it'll also hopefully help us position the bottom in the right place, but that I think otherwise is done. Okay, so we will move on to the other side, install that bag. So our first step over here, and we realized that there's gonna be a complicating factor on this side because there is a big frickin' muffler in the way. See it? Actually, it may not be that bad. Yeah, over exaggeration. But it still is going to cramp our space even more than the other side. It's still going to cramp our spot. On the bright side, at least it's not hot right now. This is true. Anyway, we'll be back when we're done this side. Enjoy the background music and the time lapse of us struggle. So now that we've got the second airbag in, the next thing we have to do is we have to plumb the airlines. And this isn't your father's plumbing work in the bathroom, because this is airline plumbing. And so we're going to go a little bit off script in terms of what they want you to do here. Normally what the instruction manual tells you to do is to have two separate airlines, one for each bag. In this case, uh, we're going to install a T-junction like this. And we're only going to have one airline that comes out the back here at the license at the license plate cavity of the bumper. Now, because I'm dumb and we started filming this without me pressing record, we've started to drill a hole into the bumper. Um, it is, in fact, steel. It Behind isn't, the plastic. It isn't plastic. Well, it's plastic to start with. Which is going to make this much more fun than we thought it was going to be. So now, without further ado, Greg will continue the drilling. Next year, we're going to cut one of the Schrader valves off because we don't need it. Well, that's the one we're going to use. 
I'm going to cut a short piece to go into the bumper that will go into the T. So, I mean, six inches is probably a lot. I should probably look before I do that, but there's nothing else in the way. So, let's just cut it. Okay. Make sure you cut it perfectly straight. That's what's nice about one of these, if you, have, if you happen to have one. So it makes it pretty much exactly perpendicular. So that, we should probably test fit in the bumper first, but let's put it into the T. Where's the T? Where's the T? Teak. Teak. The nice thing about these style of fittings is all you do is push it in and it's done. They're just like the fuel lines. Just like the fuel the lines on the BMW and you gotta push the hose in, squeeze the collar, and pull it out if you need to remove it. So make sure that's not gonna come out of there. And then grab a flat washer, a star washer, and not. All right, so because my phone is acting stupid and it won't film more than like a minute and a half at a time, um, just an update here. We've gotten the air hose on on this end and the Schrader valve fits perfectly. So now we're going to go under the truck and we're going to plumb between the two airbags and then we can blow these things up. All right, so there's another one of those nice, one of those nice valves there. All right. So one end here will go into the clip-on, click-on valve, whatever you want to call it. And then we got to figure out an ingenious way to route it around the spare tire there. Come on. flapping around it won't uh, chew a hole through it. That should work nicely I think. I'm gonna go to the other side you can stay here. Laying on an airline is always fun. Yeah. Uh, it's comfortable right? Not really. Nah. So I don't know if you guys are gonna see anything here but basically it's just gonna go up. Side is installed. Now the left side. How the heck? How? How? What? So again, routed similarly. Exactly the same. Spare tire. Yeah. Comes up to the clip-on valve there, which you guys probably can't see because this camera sucks for light. <laughs> it's easy peasy, that's all I need. Then again, it'll plug into the T, which you guys probably can't see. Nope, they cannot. Somewhere up there. Up there, up there. A little bit of... A little bit of extra. I'm just 
just like that. Yeah, just like that, we are connected. We're done. I don't think you can see it. That's all right, there's not a whole lot to see. All we did was plug it into the two sides of the T-joint. So now, the next step will be to put 10 PSI of air in it. Okay, so we just have a little electronic gauge here. Just press one button to turn it on, and it automatically calibrates. It is accurate, we have tested it. And then you have your normal kind of... So, the thing to note with this is, with any kind of compressed air system that's usually around 120 PSI, it only takes about a half a second and you've put, you know, 20, 30 PSI in these things, so we don't want to do that. So we're just gonna... I guess you should have been watching if it changed while I was doing that, but... Uh, you know, what unit is that? Kilopascals, how do you change it to PSI? We have 2.5 PSI. Okay, so not as much as I was thinking. The bags do have some volume, but... So now I'm gonna look at the bags. Yeah, you watch. Oh, yeah, some air went in them. Six and a half. So the next step here now is to tighten the bolts on the bottom of the bag. Yeah, we gotta try and get the bag lined up. Straight and parallel and everything. <clears throat> so we'll do it on this side to oh, show yeah, you guys because yeah. we have... Oh. Yeah, the other side doesn't look like that. Oh. That's close. There we go. Just wasn't quite in the right position. And then you just you can turn it a little bit to make sure that it's where it wants to sit. And that can swivel at any point afterwards, not a problem. Okay, we will do the right side as part of the video. Yep. And we'll do the left side. Uh, we don't know what size the bolt is for the bottom of that bag. Probably three quarters. Probably. Get some light over here. Although there's a muffler in the way, or a resonator, or whatever. A muffinator. A muffinator. It makes muffins, and it's also quiet. This is a very quiet truck. Unless you rev the crap out of it. It's, then it starts to make a good noise. Just to make a bit of noise. There's no torque spec on these, and you can't torque them anyways. What does it say? Just tighten securely, like it said before. Um, let me get the camera set up so I can get to it. Well, I'll just check. I'm not taking it with me. That should be fine. Yeah. And we're gonna need like an inch wrench for that plastic nut, or just pliers. That's helpful. I mean, you can't put a torque wrench on anyway, so I guess. Oh, and this, this, this splash shield is right in the way. And I would think that should be done. So. Um, and yeah, do we have? I have a feeling that top nut's probably at least an inch. So we just got an adjustable wrench for this. Assuming it's big enough. Okay. Yeah. And this is not going to take very much, so I'm just literally going to hold the wrench as close to the head as I can. And just kind of snug it a little bit. It's not really doing anything, so it's just for show. Basically. Okay, okay. that side is done. So now we're going to do the other side. We're going to tie wrap in the connections. We're going to put the wheels back on, drop the truck on the ground, and then we're going to test for leaks. So it turns out that we never filmed an outro for this video. So anyway, it's worth noting that the leak check and everything was successful and the bags did hold air and they were functional for a time. 
but uh, since we installed them, because they were never used, I guess, or maybe they're a flaw in the design, they ended up collapsing. And so now there's a big hole in the airbag on the right side from it having sat squashed for so long. And so they're no longer functional, which means we're gonna have to just remove them from the truck now. So I guess the key to that is that if you're gonna install these bags, you better make sure you use them because they're not gonna they're not gonna last very long if you don't. And we did leave the bags at the proper pressure of proper minimum pressure of, you know, around 10 psi and they were still 10 psi uh, just before uh, my parents left on their first camping trip with it and uh, after they got back is when we noticed that there was an issue with the bags and that they're no longer functional for us we could get them replaced under warranty but with how well the truck uh, handles the weight of the trailer anyway it's probably not something they're going to look at doing. So anyway, uh, with that, that wraps up this video. So if you enjoyed it, hit that subscribe button, uh, like the video, drop a comment if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. So yeah, we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.